Welcome to the Adobe booth at IBC 2025. My name is Kylie Pena and I'm a Senior Product Marketing Manager for Premiere Pro and I'm excited to show you the latest in Premiere Pro 25.5. Let's check it out. First, I want to show you the over 90 new effects, transitions, and animations now inside of Premiere Pro at no additional cost. These transitions, effects, and animations are powered by our recent acquisition of Film Impacts Tech, and those colleagues have now joined our team, so they are our Adobe teammates. So what you'll see when you open Premiere 25.5 is you now have access to the entire Film Impact dashboard and all of these amazing effects, transitions, things like uh, light leaks, blurs, even animations for text. It's really amazing. You can find them in the effects panel here under video effects, video transitions, but you can go to window extensions and film impact dashboard to see this amazing visual representation of everything that we have to offer here now. So these are just drag and drop and ready to go as is, but they're also deeply customizable. They're all GPU accelerated, real time. You can stack them up. So you can see here, I have a, a social clip and it's, it's all right, it's pretty cool, like, but it needs a little something to stand out in the sea of all the social content so people don't click away. Well, this is another version of it with a bunch of transitions, effects, and animations added and customized. So here you can see I've got some really great glitch effects that just grab your attention right away. Light leaks, glitches on the text itself. So I can glitch the text. If I click on the text itself, I also even have some effects here, like RGB split, which gives this really cool sort of vhs -y vibe to it. And then as I go down here, you can see I've got all of these really cool kind of glistening glitches and things like that to attract all this attention. Something that's really cool about the Film Impact transitions is when I click on one, I have so many options and I have this graphic curve editor, things like that. But I also have a surprising button and that's really delightful to someone like me that gets a little bit of um, uh, an editor's block when it comes to using effects, transitions and animations really well. I'm like, oh, I want to customize this, but I don't know what to do. So I can click on the surprise me button and you can see that the uh, different uh, parameters on here have changed dramatically. So I can change it here. Let's do it on this light leak right here. That's one that's really great. So I've got this cool pink right here but I can click on surprise me and you can see all the numbers change and it's like limitless what you can generate. It's almost like having an unlimited supply of these effects. So it's really cool to be able to do that. It's also really amazing to be able to really up your game with motion graphics and motion design. So I have this um, timeline here. It's literally just this text and then two PNGs. So when I play it, it looks like nothing. It's like a square, uh, I got the, you know, that's Adobe logo, Premiere logo, and then they just kind of sit and they're stacked up. But I can really bring this to life without even having to go into After Effects. So I'll go to this After. You can see we have quite a bit of stacked effects and motion. Uh, it's all film impact effects we have here. So I have this really cool, I'm gonna mute this because I wanna talk over it. It's really cool like kaleidoscope effect. So I'm bringing these graphics to life in a way that you never could before in Premiere Pro. And I've got them all stacked up here. So you can see I've got like all of these things and I even have them on adjustment layers. So if I click on this, uh, this guy, this adjustment layer, you can see that I have um, different aspects here. And then this one, you can see I have control, my new control over where the blur gets more intense and goes away. So when I play that back, you can see how that adjustment layer interacts with this one. Again, no red render bars, nothing like that. We're bringing all of these graphics to life just inside of Premiere with what you have available to you today. So it's really exciting to be able to enable editors that might not be able to have all of this motion graphics skill to go into After Effects or might not have the time to be able to do all of this inside of Premiere very quickly and really efficiently because now it's ready to go. Again, they're GPU accelerated and they're just a real delight to use. Just drag and drop and start hitting surprise me. So really excited about these over 90 new effects, transitions and animations, and they are available as soon as you update. So you have access to them all now. Next, I wanna tell you more about how we've made the timeline more precise, responsive and visually fun to work with. So one thing that we've been really focused on is making where you live every day as an editor in the timeline, just more delightful. 
by making it more responsive and, and making it easier to work with audio. So before, you'll remember when you worked with audio in Premiere, you'd click and drag the waveform and it would just turn into an outline of a box. It's been like that since the beginning. Well, no longer. Now when you click and drag a clip around, you can see the waveform so you can really line it up very precisely. This is something that I've been using for a long time internally and then in public beta, and it's hard to believe it ever was any different. So I can, as I trim, I know exactly what the waveform is going to look like here. Um, we also introduced dynamic waveforms, so they react to the volume. And then as I'm doing things like slipping and sliding, I choose the slip tool. I also can see exactly what I'm doing here. So it's really great to be able to have all of that interactivity and it's really performant and really fast. On top of that, we've been focusing under the hood on making the timeline uh, playback more performant. So we're working toward a goal of every playback session for every Premiere user to be less than a tenth of a second. That means the time from hitting the, the, the space bar or the play button to actually seeing frames move is basically instant. We're almost there, we're getting there, we're doing more work, and that just adds on to the last year that we've been working on retooling the interactivity, how it feels, how the clips actually move around and feel, the, the redrawing, refreshing. And so we're going deep underneath into the things that aren't necessarily easy to demo, but really, really matter to people that are in the edit chair all the time. So we'll have even more to come on timeline performance too. And finally, I want to talk to you about the quality of life improvements that we've made. This release is maybe the most editor-centric release we've had, at least in my tenure at Adobe. And that's because it's built by editors for editors. So we are listening to community feedback, and this is just built to support all of those different little use cases because we know that sometimes the littlest things can matter the most. So a couple of things that we've introduced recently that I think people will really love and came directly from community feedback are in the search panel, which you can do visual search here. So you can search by visuals, you can describe what you want. You can see here I have food cooked on fire and now I'm seeing all of the shots of food cooked on fire. We also added a deeper filtering. So if you need to drill deeper into the type of camera, the frame rate, anything that you have in any of these uh, properties, you can now search and add up to eight different filters and stack them up. We also have more advanced um, sorting as well. So it makes all of this stuff, especially if you're shooting a lot of different things, much easier to find. Another big request was being able to set a, a new default font uh, for captions and for text. So if you go to settings and go to graphics, you can see here now you can, you can select a different default subtitle font uh, and a different closed caption font. And that's sticky, so you don't have to look at Minion Pro anymore unless you want to. So we've been adding a lot of little things like that. We have a whole list of them on the Adobe blog and in our help X, but they come directly from what people tell us they need. And we build that and we try to insert those in every single release. So thank you all so much for your feedback. It really helps to guide the product. And if you want to get your hands on all of these updates, you can go and get Premiere 25.5 today and get started.